Hey, what's up? This is Doug with Design 8 Studio. Lots of makers and others know that high-density polyethylene is a great material to use for various things. And lately, several V1 engineering makers have been looking at using high-density polyethylene sheets to make enclosures for the mostly printed 3D printer. And I happen to have some half inch thick, which is really thicker than you need, uh, scraps of high density polyethylene left over from one of my earliest CNC jobs. And so if you've ever tried to machine it to either cut profiles or pockets or otherwise machine details into it, you know that cutting HDPE can be a little bit difficult <clears throat> Uh, unless you've got your speeds and feeds right. And uh, I want to show you how to get nice fat chips really uh, succeeding in cutting it and explain why oftentimes the cut efforts fail so miserably. First off, let me say that I speak from experience. Uh, so many times in videos like this, you'll hear me or somebody else say, ask me how I know. And whenever we say that, obviously, we mean that during some previous lack of wisdom or some previous mistake or some previous uh, lack of knowledge that we did something that didn't work out. And so we speak from experience. And many times when we say, ask me how I know, what we really mean is I'm embarrassed to admit it, so don't ask me about it. But one of the earliest jobs, as a matter of fact, I think it was the earliest job, the very first client-paying job I had after building a lowrider version 2, was the client wanted signage for uh, their foyer area made out of half-inch black high-density polyethylene, HDPE. And so talk about jumping in the deep end of the pool uh, without knowing how to swim, I was cutting something that, of all the things you can cut, HDPE is not very forgiving on not having the feeds and speeds right. In particular, a lot of things, if you go conservative and go slow, um, you can manage to get your cut done. But if you go conservative and go slow with HDPE, you wind up with a nightmare. Some of you maybe that have tried to cut it and you've gotten the kind of results I got when I first tried to cut it, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. But instead of a nice clean pocket, you have this fuzzy nightmare that is made up with lots of scalloped ridges stacked up on each other, filling up what's supposed to be an open pocket or the same thing in a profile cut. So instead of having that narrow trench be nice and open, that little trench of the profile cut is filled with these little scalloped, uh, fluffy, spaghetti, seaweed-looking things. And you'll notice that when you're doing that, you're not getting chips. You're not getting any, you're not really actually excavating any of the HDPE away. You're just converting it from nice smooth to this scalloped rough seaweed looking mess that clogs up what you're trying to do. And it's actually still attached. It's not loose and can be pried out. It's still attached. And even worse, the edges of your pockets and the edges of your profile cuts have these ridges, these scalloped ridges attached to the sides of them, sticking up and really ruining the appearance. And so um, oftentimes when we go to cut something that we haven't cut in a long time, we tend to trust our prior self. We look up the history of, okay, what kind of feeds and speeds did I use last time? And honestly, uh, when I realized that I had enough scraps of HDPE left over to make these enclosure panels for not just one, but two mostly printed 3D printers, I kind of temporarily forgot uh, how, what a headache I had trying to cut it the first time with just when I was just a newbie and just total lack of experience. 
And so I, this time I made the mistake of trusting my former self. I looked up the feeds and speeds I used before and launched into trying to cut it with that. And then as soon as I saw the scallop seaweed mess, I knew, oh no, I've forgotten what I had learned previously. And so I had to back out of that and go fix the feeds and speeds. And so I want to show you here, first of all, one of the great things I've done since then is to get a tool that helps me to know what kind of feeds and speeds to go with. And so I'm using the G-Wizard Machinist Calculator. And of course, G-Wizard stands for G-Code Wizard. So I'll show you on the screen here. You go to your uh, tool crib and you create a tool uh, and you see in the upper right hand corner, the tool is a 1 8 inch carbide one flute end mill. And this one flute end mill is really good for cutting plastic. The one flute is really huge and, and open, and it's often called an O flute because it's so open it looks like an O making its way around the bit as it goes up. And so you go into the tool crib, you add your uh, your tool that you're going to use, in this case, an, an O-flute is great for plastic, and it really shoots when it's when the feeds and speeds are right. This thing really projectile forces the excavated HDPE up out. I mean, it will cover your entire table and area with these nice fat chips of excavated HDPE that look basically like small grains of rice and sometimes even... Uh, long grains of rice. Uh, and so you s then you go to the feeds and speeds tab and in the upper right you choose the tool. That you first have to choose your default crib. Then you choose the tool that you've selected. And then you put in your uh, depth of cut and this is the step down depth of cut. Uh, in other words, each pass would cut this amount. You'll see that on the left side, a little ways down. So I put in a depth of cut of 2 point. I started with 2.3 millimeters, and then I put in 2.8. And the cut width, uh, basically, you're just going to put in the width of your uh, end mill. In this case, it's 1 8 of an inch, 3.175 millimeters. And then for a 1 8 inch end mill, you're looking at you know, around 24,000 RPM. So you put 24,000 in, and it tells you for that bit that you're in 70% uh, of capacity. You're looking good. That slider thing under the results shows as green and a good ways over. Then just to the right of that, you start putting in your feed rates. And previously, I had this <laughs> horrifically conservative feed rate that was just way, way too low, something like... 15 millimeters per second and so you start putting in a little bit more aggressive because that little green slider under the feed rate is showing way way far over to the left way way too conservative and here's why too conservative really totally butchers what you're trying to do with hdpe in a, in a conservative feed rate, instead of cutting the material at a nice brisk rate so that the cut chips can keep your tip, your end mill bit cool so that you have cool plastic being firm and being cut instead of warm, soft plastic that's shying away from you and not being cut, uh, when you when you set your feed too slow, your feed too conservative, then your bit is actually rubbing the plastic instead of cutting it. It can't get in deep enough and fast enough to actually cut the plastic, so it's just rubbing it. It's getting the plastic very hot very quick. It's getting the bit itself very hot very quick. And so that soft, hot HDPE plastic isn't firm and being cut, it's it's almost kind of molten and semi-liquid at this point, and it's just shying away from your bit and basically getting deformed into these scalloped, uh, ruffled ridges that just keep stacking up in these layers. And so 
the only bit of kind of math that I have to do is because my SOCAM software is set for millimeters per second and the G Wizard is set for millimeters per minute. So I keep having to do this divide by 60 thing, but it's not complicated math. And so I saw that 24,000 RPMs was sitting at 70%. You see it there on the left, the green slider. And so I figured I would keep pushing the feed rate amount up until it got to uh, close to 70%. And so that was 5,000 millimeters per minute. And that got me real close to 70%. And let me say that so many times while using the G Wizard calculator, I was so impressed with the speed it was telling me that I was capable of doing. And then I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the low rider, whether it was a low rider two or a low rider three, was actually capable of giving me those speeds. And so I encourage you to get a tool like this and be a little bit aggressive. So uh, once I switched my feed rate up to that 5,000 millimeters per minute, which when I did the divide by 60 thing and come over to setting up my tool in Esselcam, uh, that winds up being 83.3 millimeters per second for the feed rate. Um, and I jumped up the plunge rate also accordingly. Uh, I just began to get just phenomenal results really great results in getting this. And the only challenges I had then was that um, I've still got uh, basically a not flat table. <laughs> and so uh, I'll set the depth uh, in SOCAM. And then when it's finished, my part won't be perhaps not completely cut out because there was a part of my table that was a little too low when I didn't get all the way to the bottom of the material, which in the case of HDPE is not a horrible end of the world type situation if you've already started taking things apart, because just with a sharp X-Acto knife, you can slice through that last little bit of HDPE. And the chisel uh, for cutting through the tabs, the chisel does a pretty good job of cutting through those tabs in a nice smooth way and so I just uh, this job is a little bit frustrating because some of the engraving of the v1 logo and my design 8 studio logo was done on that earlier pass when I had the feeds and speeds too conservative and they had that scalloped seaweed looking uh, effect on them and then some of the logo cuts were of nice, crisp quality after I got the feed rate up to where it needed to be. But the bottom line is that I got the enclosure panels uh, cut, and they're looking great. And so I, eventually I'll get the mostly printed 3D printers, two of them, put together. I've, I'm still, you know, sourcing things for the bill of materials to be able to have everything that I need. But I did want to go ahead and get this uh, video out there and show you that it is totally possible, regardless of whether you're cutting with a quarter inch bit or an eighth inch bit, it is totally possible to get phenomenal crisp results when cutting HDPE. And the trick is to have the right feed rate. Also, another thing that you want to pay attention to is you want to attack it with a nice sharp bit. If your end mill has been toasted and it's dull, uh, then don't try to cut HDPE with it. Uh, and, you know, lately you can buy a batch of end mills so affordably, it doesn't make sense to waste your time using a dull bit. And so uh, once you get uh, these things, a sharp bit and the right uh, speeds on your <coughs> cutting rate, you can get great results. And I'm just really, really uh, continue to be pleased with my low rider three and continue to be frustrated with the lack of flatness of my table. The table that you see me using was really the first big carpentry job that I'd ever done. And it was, uh, I didn't have any flat place to build it. And so one of the things that's next up on my list is to do a CNC cut, a torsion box frame for a table that will hopefully be much flatter for me. And of course, Ryan of V1 Engineering 
is teasing us with some uh, CAD drawings of just such a table. And so maybe if you join your voice with mine in pleading for him to stop teasing us and bring that design out for the masses, it will help motivate him. He's got a lot on his plate and he's always busy. And so maybe the squeaky wheel will get the oil if we make some noise and plead for him to bring that out. So just a wonderful experience in cutting HDPE instead of a hair pulling experience cutting HDPE. And I wanted to show you um, both my setup and ESSEL cam, uh, how I have my tools set up. There is one last thing I wanted to mention, and that is if you look at the logo, um, the V1 logo and my Design 8 Studio logo, they have a little thin frame around them. And that frame was just a little bit too, um, a little bit too narrow for an eighth inch bit. And so I don't have any bits narrower than one eighth inch. And uh, whenever you try to tell Esselcam to cut that narrow opening, uh, to either, you know pocket that out or, or treat it as a hole with a tool that's wider than the opening. Esselcam will give you an indication that it can't cut that, uh, and it shows you that by showing an outline that's outside the, the path instead of inside it, and then when your rendered G-code file comes out, there's simply nothing happening in that area. There's no cut at all. And so you'll notice here when I show you my tool crib and Esselcam that I made a copy of the one eighth inch bit, the O flute bit, and then I named this copy that it was a copy made for small, uh, narrow places. And then I changed the tool's diameter down to a, low, a lower diameter, small enough to fit. And I know when Esselcam cuts this that I'll wind up with a an actual cut that's wider than what the artwork showed but I'd rather have a cut that's wider than the actual area uh, as opposed to not having a cut at all. So this is just a little trick that allowed me to get Estocam to go ahead and render uh, a cut in the G-code file for those areas. Uh, I guess finally the last thing I'll mention is that anytime I see what's going to be some unused space uh, like in the opening here for the fronts of the enclosure panels, uh, I like to squeeze in some logo-related things that I can use uh, for my Design 8 Studio workshop. And so uh, I threw in kind of a medium and a small of uh, logo slabs into those open spaces on both of those front plates. And I'll be able to turn those into something cool. It's really nice to have a little logo piece that... Whenever you've made something that you want to list it for sale, you can slap your little logo box down beside it when you're taking your pictures. And so it gets your, uh, gets your name or your shop name or your logo into those pictures in a kind of clever and easy way. And so I like to have a few of those. Well, I hope that this has been a help to you. And until the next video... This is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio. If you like our content, please click like and consider subscribing. And until the next video, I wish you happy making.